Welcome back to the channel. After unlocking all of these side quests, equipment, and research gear, I'm going to give you my favorite loadout. Note that as I'm sure you're aware, as you start out, you'll have a very limited option in terms of what you can equip due to the size of your ship. But as you upgrade your ship, you'll have much more variety in terms of what your options are. And as always, before we get into the video, help a fisherman out and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more great content. So diving in, pun intended, starting at the stern of your vessel, let's take a look at your engine options. There's a lot of variety you can do here and either play it riskier or safer, depending on how daring you like to be. If you probably haven't noticed, you can pretty easily damage your ship as the seas are treacherous and the rocks are very uh, rocky and will damage your equipment. I'm a firm believer in a happy balance between a safe and risky gameplay, which is why I love the jet engine so much as you can lose one of these from taking damage and not just totally be screwed. They're expensive as the cost of a single jet drive engine, which takes up a single square is the same cost as the refined outboard engine, which takes up three spaces. But I promise you they're worth it because A, jet engines are faster than the engines that take up two, three, and four squares, assuming you're comparing the same amount of jet engines per the engine space used. For example, two jet engines are faster than one single engine that takes up two spaces. And B, if you take any damage and lose one of your jet engines, your other engines will pick up the slack so you're not dead in the water, which in dredge is a very bad place to be. Now, this isn't as cut and dry as it is when you unlock the larger engines like the twin jet drive engine, which takes up five spaces, and the beast engine stack, which takes up six spaces. You'll actually be faster with these equipped than five or six jet engines. So what do you do here? So it'll depend on how many slots you have, of course, but assuming you're totally maxed out, I recommend the twin jet drive engine and filling the rest of the empty slots with jet drive engines. And if you want to play riskier, you can certainly equip the engine stack, which basically gives you a bonus jet drive engine with the additional speed. But if you lose this engine and you're in open water with only a couple extra jet drive engines, then you're pretty screwed. Now, if you want to play it super ultra safe, you can always use only jet drive engines, but that's very expensive and in my opinion, a little bit unnecessary. But if you're the world's worst boat captain and cannot stop running into rocks, then by all means. So regarding researching, I highly recommend using your research parts to first and foremost unlock the jet drive engines and then focus on pushing to the twin jet drive engine as you progress through the game. Now moving to the port and starboard utilities, which is the left and the right side for you land lovers. Starting out, I definitely recommend utilizing your Tronet as your beginner player because you'll earn a little bit extra money. That said, as you upgrade your ship, you're going to want to switch this out once you've fully upgraded your ship. So the first item that you'll want to make sure that you have unlocked is the Fathomless Winch, which is a 2x2 two two rod that gives you access to Abyssal, Hadal, and Oceanic. Now, it's important to note that you have to actually progress a decent amount through the story to actually gain access to these types of fish. The next important piece of this puzzle is to unlock the Versatile Rod, which is an odd shape, 3-2 block shape that gives you access to coastal, shallow, mangrove, and volcanic fish. These two rods alone give you access to every single type of fish in the game, obviously aside from those couple that are trawl net only and the crab pot creatures. The third item is where you can personally experiment with whether you want to equip one of the three trawl nets that fit in the 2x2 two two grid, either the improved, silt filtering, or tempered net. Or, and my personal favorite option, is to equip the Encrusted Talisman, which increases your fishing speed by over 300% and increases your chances of catching aberrations. Now, it's only a 2% increase, which is kind of small, but by the time you fully upgraded your vessel, you really don't need to use your net anymore, since upgraded crab pots can better be used for passive income. Now, I cover, though, how to unlock the Encrusted Talisman in another video that I will link below, so be sure to check it out. It's also important to note that you can shove more rods into this setup as you'll have three spots left over to increase your fishing speed, but personally, I'd rather just have the three extra spaces for picking up things along the way. And I'm moving to the bow of the ship. Your lights are probably the least important on your ship, but still important enough that you don't want to waste time or money on them. Starting off, the flame of the skylight is an absolute must, as it's A, honestly pretty easy to get for free, and B, the brightest light in the game. It takes up a 2x1 grid, but is easily worth it despite having a little less range than both the Tungsten Floodlight and the Incandescent Array. I like to pair this with two of the Cloudy Lens Lights, which gives you a total 5,000 lumens. Now, the only reason why you may want to use the Incandescent Array is if you struggle with reacting to the rocks in the water. It's much dimmer, but has a range of 40 meters and takes up a 3x1 space, so you're losing out on 1,250 lumens. That said, I personally don't have any trouble with reacting fast enough to dodge rocks, so I still recommend using Flame in the Sky and two cloudy lenses. 
And in that same Encrusted Talisman video that I mentioned, I cover also how to get the Flame of the Sky Light, which is linked below. And to sort of wrap things up, there is a lot of personal preferences on what gear you choose. There's lots of rooms to mix and match, but those are just my personal favorites. I hope the video was helpful, and what is your favorite loadout or item? Please let me know in the comment section below, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace out, YouTube.